So if solitude brings us clarity, and the definition of manifestation is making reality or making clear, it's almost as if those two kind of go hand in hand. Hey, beautiful people. So she's back after how many years? I know. But I'm here to stay for real this time. No, but really, I promise. <laughs> so today's video is about how I used solitude to manifest my dream life. And what I mean by the word dream life, the life I've always imagined myself living ever since I was a young child. First, starting this video with some definitions. So the definition of solitude relating to a person being is the state or situation of being alone. Synonyms for solitude include remoteness, isolation, retirement, privacy, and peace. I repeat, a synonym for the word solitude is also peace. Hmm. If solitude also means peace, why do so many people try to make it seem like being alone is such a bad thing? Keep that in mind. Now we are going to define manifest. In its adjective state, manifest is clear or obvious to the eye or mind. In its verb state, the definition of manifest is to make evident, to make certain, or to make clear. So manifestation is to make your reality. Cool. So a lot of the time when people are talking about manifestation in their minds are thinking about, oh, I'm just going to sit and dwell on something and hope it comes to life. But manifestation doesn't mean you're going to just dream about something. It means you will make it a reality. It doesn't say how you're going to make it a reality. So whether you're dreaming about it and hoping the universe brings it to you or whether you're putting in the work for it, however you make that goal or idea a reality is how you manifested it. The way I like to manifest is by doing both the, you know, dreaming and dwelling on oh, I'm in my own little world the Lululand, but also I like to put in the motherfucking work. Am I allowed to curse on here? I don't know. Oh, sorry. Sorry to the kids. Sorry to the kids. <laughs> so a lot of my manifestation in life has been a result of me putting in the efforts to achieve what I want to achieve, as well as believing in myself, the universe, higher power, whatever it is that you choose to follow in the world. And that combination has brought me to where I am now and will continue to bring me to higher points as I continue to climb up the ladder of reaching my wildest dreams. Okay, so now that we got the definitions out of the way, how does solitude tie into manifestation? Again, from my experience, solitude creates clarity. The act of being alone creates clarity. And you're probably thinking, well, you can have clarity even when you're around other people. That is true. But the thing about being around other people is that you don't really know what's going on in their mind. If you're psychic, that's great, you know. But unfortunately, from the things that have happened to me in my life, I can give you guys various experiences, examples, trials and tribulations I've endured in life. I know for a fact that I'm not psychic because if I was psychic, I would have seen it coming a mile away. Okay. <laughs> so when you're in solitude, when you're alone, you are with yourself. There is nobody that you know 100% in this world more than you know yourself. There is nobody. Humans are unpredictable. Humans are very unpredictable. The only human that you can 100% predict what is going to happen with 100% of the time is yourself because you know yourself. At least we hope you know yourself, right? Right. Solitude creates clarity in your mind, in your life, in your aura. With solitude, I was able to find myself easier. The reason why I think solitude is so powerful is that when you're in solitude, you are not influenced by what other people are doing. You are not influenced by other people's views. You are not influenced by who other people are. You're only influenced by what you are and what you want. With solitude, I was given the time and the space and the clarity to find my own identity. And you notice how I keep bringing up the word clarity with solitude? Remember how earlier in this video I was given the definition of manifest? And one of the synonyms of manifest is clarity. So if solitude brings us clarity and the definition of manifestation is making reality or making clear, it's almost as if those two kind of go hand in hand. Hey, I'm not Einstein, but I know one plus one equals two. Okay, okay. <laughs> when you are able to have a clear visual of who you are, what you want your life to be, what your goals are, what your morals are, 
your dreams, your aspirations, it's almost impossible to be steered off the right path. People are unpredictable. I noticed a trend lately on social media, women making videos about how um, they were in a relationship with a narcissist who was like secretly plotting their downfall or they had narcissistic friends who secretly didn't want the best for them and were like sabotaging them behind the scenes. And that is what I'm talking about when I say you don't really know people. None of us will ever 100% know somebody. It doesn't matter if you've been friends with them since you were one years old. It's so sad if you think about it because it really is a sad thing to think about, but you don't know that person. Uh, an example of that is Selena Q. Rest in peace to that beautiful icon. Um, the woman who murdered her was her closest friend who also ran her fan club. So it's like, if you can't trust your closest friend who runs your fan club, aka who's supposed to be your number one supporter, who can you really trust with your life and all your life decisions? Not really many people. And that's why it's so important to literally find value in yourself, find value in your decisions, find value in what you want to do and prioritize yourself first and foremost. The only outcast to this, I believe, would be if you have children. Because once you have kids, like your life destiny is to take care of those kids and make decisions for them. So to all the moms watching that, please keep that in mind. I am a childless 26 year old, so I don't have any kids. I don't have anything to worry about. And although I have a partner, I still value my solitude. We are not attached by the hip. Even in my past relationships, I've never been the type of person to like always be on the hip of my significant other. I've always valued solitude because a lot of my life achievements are a result of solitude because I was able to work on myself, better myself, figure out what I wanted. The thing about life is that you were born in this world alone. You know, a lot of people say, oh, well, that's not true. Like some people are twins. Um, has anybody ever watched The Birth of Twins? One twin comes out at a time. They don't come out together. The only twins that come out together are those conjoined twins and they usually are attached by the face and body so they can never be apart, you know. Those are the only twins that come out together. Every other twin, even if it's quadruplets, whatever, it's one at a time. There are even videos of, you know, a woman giving birth and like one twin came out 20 hours before the other twin. 20 hours? Yeah, so if God wanted us to be attached at the hip with everybody else all the time, he would have done that. Again, aside from the conjoined twins. And even that is a scientific um, problem on its own. So even the universe is set up in a way for us to be reminded that we are our own individuals. We do not need to be conjoined with somebody else in order to prosper or get to where we need to be. In solitude, the only person you have to work on is yourself. So you don't have to help eight other people with their life problems. Trust me, I used to be that friend that my phone was always available when people wanted to complain about their problems. And it's like, after I just spent eight hours helping somebody else solve their problem, my problem is still there. I probably should have spent that eight hours solving my own problem, right? You cannot solve your own problems if you're too busy solving everyone else's. So that's definitely something I learned. And this is not an attack on being social and being around other people. I think people can bring a lot of value into your life if they are destined to be in your life. So we're not talking about the Selena Q friends who are secretly plotting on your downfall but smiling in your face. We're not talking about the men who are secretly envious of you and don't want you to prosper. We're not talking about the family members who, you know, are trying to sabotage you and all that mess. I have some story times for y'all. If y'all want some story times, let me know because <laughs> I could keep going. I could keep going for sure, but I'm trying to stay on topic. But I will be posting more videos soon, by the way, because I have some story times for sure. If people are destined to be in your life, that's great. That means they are meant to be on your journey. But again, remember, none of us are psychic, so we're never 100% sure who is destined to be in our life. If you think about it, every encounter with another human being is literally wishing upon a star. It's like, I hope this person isn't a secret murderer. I hope this person isn't secretly trying to sabotage me. I hope this person isn't trying to set me up and get robbed. It's like, we don't know until it happens. So it's like, ugh. Never value people more than you value yourself. Because when push comes to shove, you know you will always be there for yourself. So when it comes to manifesting your life, you know, your goals, your dreams, what you want for your future family, yada yada, what you want is the most important. You don't need the opinions of other people to influence what you desire. It's so crazy. I started manifesting my dream life at the age of, you know, 19, 20-ish? No, more so 20, 21. But at the age of 19, I was kind of transforming to a more advanced mindset. And you know what's so funny about that? The reason I started transforming to a higher mindset is because I had endured betrayal from a few people that I thought were the most amazing girls I've ever met in my life. I was having issues with my boyfriend at the time. And all of those problems were fogging my vision. Remember, manifestation means clarity. But it's hilarious because a few years after I got out of those situations and I was in solitude, the fog diminished. 
I could see clearly for sure. I was more assertive with what I wanted out of life. I was doing better financially, spiritually, less depression, all because I was developing more self-love. And that's an, another amazing factor of solitude, the development of higher self-love. If you don't love yourself, nobody ever will. My life did a complete 180 after I started prioritizing solitude and learning how to value what I wanted more than what other people wanted. A funny story I have to share, although I told you guys I wasn't gonna do like story times in this video, um, in a future one I will, so you guys can get more specific storylines about it. There was this event I went to when I was like 20 years old. I didn't even wanna go. I went because my friends wanted to go. Another thing about, you know, being around people is that you have to take into account what they want and what they desire. The new me now, although my friends would want to do something, I would still do what I want to do. But back then, I would just do it just to make everybody else happy. I almost ended up getting murdered at that event. I, again, I'll do a story time so y'all can get in, you know, more details. But it's like, Jet, you didn't even want to go there. You went because you were trying to prioritize other people and their feelings. If I would have prioritized myself that day, that situation never would have even occurred. Ever. Again, you have to value your solitude. The thing about it is that I'm not even those type of people that are like always trying to be around other people. I just had an issue back then with asserting what I wanted. Because I've always loved being in my own presence, yeah, yeah, but like I would kind of let other people influence me. Being around other people, they influence your decisions. When you're in the process of determining what you want out of life and how you want to identify your own self, you do not want to be surrounded by a bunch of souls that are going to influence what your decision will be. I learned that the hard way for many occasions. But what I loved most is that once I started basking in my own presence and understanding how powerful it is to be with myself and most importantly, not being afraid to admit that. Because a lot of us who enjoy solitude were afraid to say it out loud because everybody's always like, oh, like, you think you're better than people, you don't want to be around people, yeah, yeah, It's never that. A lot of us who enjoy solitude are the most positive people when we're around others. Simply because we spend so much time in peace, again, the synonym for solitude is peace, we spend so much time in our own peaceful presence that when we're around other people, all we have to give them is peace. People who do not love and enjoy themselves can never bring peace to others. And if they do, it's going to be a facade. And... I don't know about y'all, but we don't like to do anything fake over here, so, uh-uh. But yeah, for those of you who are not comfortable being alone or, you know, feel like you can't be alone for whatever reason, usually as a result of trauma from childhood, just remember, you can always rely on your own self. You do not have to be around just anybody, especially people with bad energy, just to get to where you need to be in life. The manifestation will come as a result of the clarity of solitude. I'm just, I'm just going by the definition. I'm, uh, don't hate the player, hate the game. <laughs> but yeah, that's definitely how I use solitude to manifest my dream life. The more energy and efforts I put into my own self, the greater the reward was. It's like, the more I invested into myself and my own peace and my own energy, everything I wanted just started happening. Of course, with the addition of hard work, anything is possible. When you know yourself, nobody can ever tell you who you are. No man can walk all over you. No friend can walk all over you. Nobody can talk down to you because whatever it is that they're saying or doing to you, you know is not more important than what you do for yourself. You know what I'm saying? So keep that in mind. We appreciate those who are on our journey with us to help us advance, but we do not prioritize that over our own self. You know yourself more than anybody knows you. Never be afraid to trust yourself and to put a lot of effort and care into your own self and your own life. Okay, that's the end of this video. Um, again, the story time aspect of this video will be coming soon because I have <laughs> I have too many story times, guys. People are so strange. Love yourself, embrace yourself, and respect yourself, and work on yourself. Why is everybody always trying to work on other people? Work on yourself and watch yourself blossom into who you're meant to be. Because you deserve it. What the hell? Like, stop playing. Bye, guys. <laughs>